The following program is brought to you by Whiteman TV. All content in the Stay Strong, Live Long Falls Prevention Education Series has been created for informational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health care provider with any questions you have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard on this television production. Welcome to our Stay Strong, Live Long uh, education series on falls prevention, uh, brought to you by uh, myself, which is Julie Kirkhoff from the Upper Grand Family Health Team, and I'm the geriatric nurse specialist with the Family Health Team. And I am Kelly G. I am the VON Smart Seniors Maintaining Active Roles Together Gentle Exercise and Falls Prevention Coordinator. That is quite a title. Um, <laughs> yes, definitely. Yep. So Kelly and I have met actually a few years ago and in the role that I perform at the Upper Grand Family Health Team in meeting with my older adult clients over the many years I've been here and knowing the, the beautiful thing that VON offers in our county as well through that SMART program, it, it seemed like the right thing to actually partner together to, um, to bring a focus of physical activity to the older adult. Um, and then not only that, but look at how can we branch this out to really focus on falls prevention. And falls prevention is already something that the VON um, educate the community about. Um, and often that's done through the lens of their kinesiologist on staff there, Rachel DeYoung, which you'll see in one of the modules as she, as she performs um, and, and gives us a great deal of information. But in knowing and the research we've done as well, often it's, it's really about that community that helps us focus on falls prevention. So it's looking at the expertise that actually exists out there. And in uh, the family health team, specifically with Upper Grand, we have actually a wide variety of expertise within that family health team right off the hop. So it just made good sense to, to have that partnership with the VON and what they're already doing with the physical activity to then branch out to give more information to the older adults or anyone in fact in, uh, in Centre Wellington or Wellington County around falls prevention and taking it from a focus of many different disciplines. So we have um, in this 12 part education series we actually have a variety of different allied health professionals that will be bringing you information uh, right in the home. And it's these little morsels, these small bits of information that can actually hopefully make a huge impact um, in your life. And hopefully at the end of the day, improve your quality of life and hopefully and ultimately prevent future falls as well. So we will see a variety of, of these different health professionals and I'll talk a, a little bit more in more detail um, as we go through today's session. And our focus here today is really about the legend of the fall. And that legend of the fall is giving us information of what a fall is and the statistics that surround um, falls, especially in our region. And then we'll branch from that and we'll focus on chronic disease and how that has uh, an impact with our falls risk and what we can do to hopefully help prevent those future falls. Knowing that the research out there is really about that fitness, that good physical fitness, um, it's, it's really about not only being strong and, and maintaining that, that physical fitness to prevent a fall, but also if we do have that fall, that we are stronger and more able to actually rise and get up from that fall as well. So just to reiterate, uh, the VON and their SMART program with the Upper Grand Family Health Team and our panel of experts have also partnered with a few community members as well. And, um, and I'll share who those persons are and their expertise that they'll be sharing in the modules that you'll be seeing throughout the month of November and onward as well. 
And it's sometimes important to know who our community members are, to know where we can go to even access further information um, to support us in preventing a future fall. And it really does take a community to prevent a fall. It really does. And, and yes, it has been an absolute pleasure to work with Julie and the Upper Grand Family Health team and all of those community um, providers. What I'm going to talk to you about right now is I'm going to talk to you about a fall. Like why, why are we, why are we talking about falls? What's the importance of a fall? Right? Has anybody here or anybody at home ever had a fall? Right? Actually, one in three seniors this year will have a fall and falling once doubles your chance of actually falling again. And I'm gonna get into a little bit more of the stats um, in, a, in a little bit. But first of all, I'm just gonna talk to what exactly is a fall? Because maybe you're at home and you're not quite sure what a fall is. Because some people think, well, I had a slip, I had a trip, um, you know, was that actually a fall? Do you actually have to incur injury for it to be a fall? Do you think? Well, the World Health Organization actually did come up with a definition, and the definition, um, in a sense, is vague. They describe it as an event, and it's an event where a person inadvertently comes to rest on the floor, ground, or lower level, and that is with or without injury. So, um, as you'll see here on the, on the screen, um, a fall is clinically defined as an event in which results in a person coming to rest or inadvertently on the ground or floor or lower level with or without injury. So in saying that, um, why would we, be, why would we be, be concerned about falls, right? What, what is that concern? Well, because falls lead to those undesirable consequences. So what are some of those undesirable consequences? That's right, broken bones, right? Who here wants to break a bone? And if we break a bone, what does that lead to, right? If we break a bone, then we have to go into that hospital. Or maybe if we break a bone and it's serious enough, then we might have to do a relocation. So we might actually have to leave our home and go live in you know, long-term care or assisted living, something like that. And I, I think in the end, no one wants to leave their own home. And people want to maintain that independence. I, I, I know that I do. Um, if we talk about hip fractures, and again, just another stat here, and I don't, I don't give you these stats um, to scare you, and I really don't want to scare you, um, but what I want to do is just talk about the gravity or the prevalence of, of the situation and how serious really falls are. But if someone had a fall and actually uh, incurred a hip fracture, 20% of those people will die within the first year. So it's really important that you take the information that we're going to give you over these 12 modules to minimize your risk of falls. Um, and of course, if we have, you know, we have uh, an injury, so we break a bone, um, we, de we have decreased um, independence. And again, too, what does that result in? That, that results in that decreased quality of life, right? If we can't take care of our own self, right, we start to lose like our own self-respect, our own dignity, right? And we, we don't want to do that. Again, going back into some of those um, stats, I'm just gonna mention to you a couple more of them. So one in three seniors will fall every single year and falling once actually doubles your chance of falling again. It is the leading cause of injury-related death among seniors and it is the number one contributor to loss of independent living. And just to, to bring it in a little bit, because um, those are Canadian-wide stats, but to bring it in and to make it more real, I'm going to talk about Centre Wellington and some of the stats that um, we as a Falls Prevention um, Committee were able to pull from Groves Memorial Hospital. And we found that oh, annually over the past five years that there have been greater than 500 falls seen in emergency room at Groves Memorial Hospital. 500 falls. And unfortunately, ladies, if you're listening at home or here in the audience, you guys have to take special precaution as well because we're actually falling 60% more than the males. Um, 
there was over 40 falls in the, a month. So 40 falls a month in 2014. And the same trend was occurring in 2015. Um, and 28% of those falls are actually because of slips and trips. Um, and so, you know, that is um, what's happening. So people, falls are happening. And why do you think, why do you think you know, if you fall once, that actually doubles your chance of falling again. Why would you think that? You get scared. Exactly, you get scared. So something happens up in our brain and we actually develop um, a fear of falling. And this fear can actually um, lead to a very, very vicious cycle, right? So we go out, we trip and we fall. We may be on our way to exercise class. Um, and then we develop a fear of falling again. So maybe we get back, we actually recover from having that fall, but then the next time we go to think about exercise class, we're gonna be like, well, you know what, on my way there last time, I actually had a fall and I injured myself. You know what, I think I'm gonna avoid that because I, I, I totally wanna avoid, you know, breaking a bone or injuring myself again, so it's not worth the risk. So what would we do? We reduce that activity. Right? We start to reduce our activity. And what happens if we reduce our activity? We, our muscles get weak, our um, bones get weak. We become frail. We start to you know, get entirely weak. And what does that do to our risk of falls? It increases our risk of falls. What do you think that does to our fear level? Right? It increases our risk of fear. Now I'm, now I'm terrified because I was afraid before when I wasn't frail and now that I'm frail and weak, everything. So you actually start to reduce that activity even more. So maybe you stopped going to the exercise class, but then the next thing you stopped doing was you stopped walking out to the, the post office box to go get your mail. You start to get to your daughter or your son maybe to do that. Then you stop, you're like, oh, well, the doorbell rang, but I shouldn't probably get up and answer the door because I might slip and fall to get. So I'm not going to get up from the um, from my chair anymore, you know. Oh, and then all of a sudden it gets really hard. I have to get up from my chair to go to the bathroom, but maybe one day you won't be able to do that. And is that the way that you want to spend the last couple years of your life, or even you know the last decade of your life, which many people do? And the thing is, is what I'm going to talk to you and what I'm going to focus on today is that you have the ability, you have the ability to change this. Even if you've had a fall or maybe you haven't had a fall, but you're just afraid of falling, you actually can reverse this vicious cycle. And all you have to do is increase your activity. As soon as you start to increase that activity, you can actually, um, build muscles. You can make those bones stronger. And I'm not saying that you have to start out really big um, and doing, you know, going to a full hour exercise class, but you need to do something. And maybe it means that I just need to get up and, you know, walk around my house um, once every hour if I could do that, right? Increasing your activity any way that you possibly can. And again, what this will do, so we increase our activity, we become stronger. When we become stronger, what does this do to us? This actually makes us more confident. Strongness or being, becoming stronger improves our confidence. And what happens if we improve our confidence? We eliminate that fear, right? Or we can overcome our fear because now we're confident and we're standing taller and we're, we're feeling stronger and then we're gonna continue to do more. So we can reduce this um, frail or this fall cycle, which also is the same when people have had a fall, we also associate that usually that people become frail. And again, want to um, let everybody know that just because you became frail when you were 80 years old, because you maybe had a fall, it doesn't mean you have to stay frail. You have every ability to regain all of your strength and um, endurance that you had before the fall and getting back to doing all of those things that you used to do. And again, this is where the stand up to falls
um, intervention was created and it was in hopes to create or prevent those falls, right? So what we actually had is that what we found was that um, exercise or information, so you need the information, you need the tools, you need to understand that a fall doesn't happen for one reason only. There are many, many different things that encompass a fall. And we're gonna cover that um, throughout the different modules um, in this education series. And as long as you're taking that information, then you can use those tips and tricks to minimize your risk of falling. And, and that is great. And there were studies done that showed that people that actually took in the education, listened to all of the wisdom from experts, um, that they were able to minimize the risk of falling. But if they actually did a falls prevention education and they combined it with some sort of exercise, the results um, drastically showed higher rates of success when we combined both the falls prevention and the exercise together. So what we have at VON is um, we have a couple of different programs that we offer. So we realize that not every single person, you know, especially if you just get out of hospital, you maybe had an acute illness um, and now you have a fear of falling or maybe you, you had a fall and you had an injury and now you're recovering from that fall. And now potentially you might have got um, a visit from an occupational therapist or a physiotherapist, but um, at the end of their sessions, they leave you and you're like, but I'm not quite ready to go into those group programs. And this is where we have a wonderful program. We actually have two. One is volunteer led, um, where we have a volunteer that comes into the home for a period of 12 weeks and they'll work with clients on a one-to-one -one basis and uh, hopefully at the end of the 12 weeks, we can maybe potentially transition them into a group class or if nothing else, we can at least help them to be able to do those um, exercises on their own so that they can maintain um, their current status or maybe improve a little bit. And then we have another um, VON program, and this one um, is often delivered by our kinesiologists or different exercise um, fitness instructors that will come into a client's home, but they'll work with them two to three times a week and delivering those same set of 14 different exercises. But with this program, we are um, really looking to, you know, um, make those gains, those rehabilitation gains with that person, or even maybe it's just building enough confidence so that we can uh, so that we can eventually transition them into our group programs. And and the reason why we we really do the big push on the group programs is because group programs have far more benefits than just the exercise themselves. They're actually, there's the social, um, the spiritual, there's just the getting out of the house, all of those things. Um, when you go out to an exercise class, a lot of people say, I came out to the exercise class because I wanted to improve my, my physical fitness. And they said, I came away with this exercise class with lots of great friends. Um, so it's great that it, it, does, it does more than just the physical benefits. And and, and with our classes, um, we really wanted um, to develop a class um, that was inclusive. And uh, what I mean by that is that we wanted a class that would include um, different levels of mobility and fitness levels. Um, so to say that, you know, if someone was in a wheelchair, that they could still participate in the class. And if we had someone that was in great physical um, condition, that they could still participate in the class. And you think, well, that's quite a wide range. How would you do that? Um, and what we do typically in our classes is that we um, provide each participant with a chair and whether or not they choose that chair to sit in to do the entire duration of the exercises from a seated position and maybe just starting out maybe they're just doing range of motion exercises just um, to start or maybe they come to class and they're actually like, like I'm really not in too bad of condition, or, or, or maybe they are, um, but they have real problems with balance. 
So what we get them to do is we get them to hang on to the back of the chair so they always have a, a, a point of balance, a, a point of st stability that they can hang on to that chair so that if they are feeling off balance that they can hang on to it. And maybe eventually, you know, we've had a number of people that came in hanging on with the death grip and, and then several months later were able to, you know, take one hand off and eventually take two hands off um, and start to use their upper body as well as their lower body um, while exercising. And then we also have those um, people that are in great physical um, condition and they will do the exercises behind the chair. And even some of them, just to bring up the level a little bit higher, will use small hand weights while even participating in the cardiovascular component. Um, so it really, this is what it, the really unique about it is that you know we can have a spouse that's in great physical condition um, and her partner is, uh, has Parkinson's disease and they can come to the same class, they can still have that social interaction, but they can both still get that physical benefit. So in each of our classes, we have an aerobic um, endurance component. And what this does is it really works on our heart health, right? So it helps with um, delivering of that oxygenated blood to those working muscles. Um, and again, wh why is that important? It's so that we can do those endurance type activities. So whether that means walking to the post office, whether that means, you know, maybe you can walk to the store and back or if you want to walk around the block. Or for some people, it's just like, I want to be able to walk to my bathroom and back, right? Whatever your goal may be, again, that's an endurance type activity. Um, and then we do work on balance. So we do different exercises um, to challenge the balance. And also we do different exercises to recover from episodes of being in balance. We, you know, if you are, about to slip or trip, you gotta step that foot out in front and then you gotta push off and recover, right? So we do many steps like this throughout the exercise class and what are we doing, right? We're actually teaching that fall um, recovery, right? Because as we age, we tend to have a slower reaction time. But again, too, the brain is a fascinating thing and we can help it to relearn how to use those uh, quick reactions once again. But again, if you don't use it, you will lose it. Um, and at the end of the program, we, um, we do do some uh, weight training, some resistance training, and that's to build those strong muscles. So to build those strong muscles so that we can pick up those grocery bags, so that we can pick up our grandchild, you know, hold that new baby, or whatever it may be that you want to do at home or in your lifestyle that would require um, strong muscles. And again, too, varying from, you know, not using, um, using a ball for a piece of equipment to using you know a weight um, again there's various um, adaptions and modifications that we can make throughout this exercise program and again at the end we are going to work on that flexibility component and that's our stretching so we improve that range of motion around those joints so which allows us to do the reaching and um, and and movement of the body that we need and every single exercise within this program is um, based on functional movements. And what I mean by functional movements is that each movement is functional in everyday activities, right? So we do, you know, we will do something in the exercise like a punch, right? However, what could that mimic, right? That could mimic reaching into the closet and pulling something out, right? We do the sit to stand, right? Where we sit in our chair and then we stand back up. Again, it mimics those activities of daily living that are very, very important in order to stay independent. So all of the exercises not only are fun and we coordinate them and we put them with music, but they actually have purpose. And um, we also, um, with the Upper Grand Family Health Team, there are a number of exercise programs as well. The Stepping Out program, which is kind of a transition that they do um, from hospital to community, and, and they really want to focus on the fact of stepping out and getting outside and going out um, to an exercise program within the community. So it doesn't really matter what exercise you choose but you need to choose exercise if you want to reduce or reverse that awful frailty or fall cycle so if you want to get back from frail or if you want to take it from being frail and getting back to being fit or if you have a fear of falling and you want to reduce that fear the best way to do that 
is through the exercises. And now I'm going to have Julie is going to, I'm going to pass it back over to Julie and Julie is going to talk about all of those chronic conditions that actually contribute to falls. So here we go once again, Julie. Thanks, Kelly. Excellent program. That SMART program is, has been essential in our community for a lot of years, so that's good. Good information. So the, the module or this educational series is, is meant to be um, kind of peppering with chronic disease and what, um, what can actually bring with chronic disease. And so I want to start maybe first by defining what chronic disease actually is. Um, and the World Health Organization does actually label it as a non-communicable disease which means that it's just not contagious. It's something that we develop often because of lifestyle factors more than anything else. But a chronic disease is defined of something of long duration and of slow progression. And there's four kind of umbrellas under chronic disease, one of them being cardiovascular. So that would be um, things like stroke or, or high blood pressure, hypertension, things of that nature. Then there's actually a category of cancers, and often some of those cancers that do exist can have that long duration and that slow progression for us as well. Another type of chronic disease is um, ones impacting our lungs, so our lung health, our respiratory system, and that would be diseases like uh, COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or even like asthma. And the fourth category, which, which is in and of its own, is diabetes. So diabetes is a, is a big one. And, um, and so what I want to talk about with hearing or just defining chronic disease and those four types, why are we even bringing this into the conversation of falls prevention? It's often as we age and as we kind of collect our lifestyle features that can bring about chronic illness or chronic disease that with those diseases can actually come side effects or impacts onto our body systems. So in fact, chronic illness can impact our vision or even our hearing. It can impact our balance, maybe even impact our mood. It can impact our, our blood pressure, um, our breathing. Um, can even impact our bone and muscle strength, our coordination our walking ability, and even things like our bladder and bowel function as well. So when those elements in our body system start to change and alter, our ways of managing them can become a little bit, well, what do I do next? How do I um, lessen my risk of falling or injury or even having things worsening with this chronic disease um, in light of what I have to manage, knowing that Maybe for the last 70 years, I've done just fine, but now I've got to start altering things or changing things, and I don't know how to go about doing that. So we're hoping in these next several weeks and the modules that are being presented through Whiteman that you will gain some little tips and tricks, some tools that will help you kind of maybe, first of all, understand a chronic disease that may be impacting you or a loved one um, that's close to you. Um, and, and hopefully be able to find ways that you can start to slightly change how you already do things to make that bigger impact. And most importantly, exercise has been shown to positively impact nearly every chronic illness out there. So another layer to chronic illness is that we may often develop more than one chronic illness in our lifetime. So in fact, as we develop more chronic illnesses, do you think that may impact our falls risk in any way? Absolutely. Absolutely is right. So the more chronic illnesses we have to um, measure and manage in our day-to-day -day life can certainly impact um, our falls risk. And that's, there's usually three things that it kind of becomes deduced to. Number one is medication use. So as we um, add on those chronic illnesses to manage that diabetes or that blood pressure or to manage the pain of our arthritis, it's then we're peppering more medications into that lovely dosette. And also with more chronic illness or chronic disease, we may actually have more impact on our mobility. So getting from A to B, even if A to B is from bedroom to bathroom, can also be impacted as well. 
And then the third big thing as we layer on different chronic diseases is sensory deficits. Okay, so I want to go back for a moment here on the medication piece and I want to share that in one of our modules we actually have our pharmacist with the Upper Grand Family Health Team and her name is Cora Van Zutphen and she will be spending a good section of the time sharing with us her expertise on medications, medication use, which medications actually have a higher risk for fall potential and some tips and tricks on how to best navigate that as well. That second feature about the mobility limitations, we actually have a few different speakers to talk about that. We have Susan McCoslin, who is a physiotherapist with the Arthritis Society, and she will actually be sharing a fair bit of information of what she does and what she knows about arthritis and its impact in day-to-day -day life, how it can actually impact our risk for falling, and then again, some tips and tricks to help us manage that better, to lessen that risk of falling. We also have uh, the pleasure of, of two um, occupational therapists. Uh, one of them, uh, Amanda Froze, uh, is with our Upper Grand Family Health team. And another occupational therapist is Joanne Van Leeuwen. And Joanne Van Leeuwen is from Care Partners. Um, many people in the community may have already seen Joanne over the years as she's been uh, a pillar in our community, often accessed through CCAC or the Community Care Access Centre. Um, and, and both of these gals will be talking about both mobility aids as well as more specifically around home and environment safety. And they'll even be bringing in a guest speaker to talk a little bit more about fire safety as well. And then when we look at um, the third element of, as we pile on these chronic diseases, that third element of, uh, of sensory deficits. We have a, a few people speaking to us about that. And we have, first of all, um, Mary Young, and she is a hearing care counsellor with the um, Canadian Hearing Society. And Mary will be spending um, a good chunk of time sharing with us her expertise on, on hearing deficits and how that can actually impact um, our balance and um, be a risk for falls as well as we are trying to interpret our environment differently with loss of hearing um, and then her tips and tricks around that as well. We also have with us uh, Dr. Cassie Reed from the Upper Grand Eye Care and she'll be sharing uh, with us very valuable information on both vision health and vision care um, and again looking at what can be a risk for falls and those again those tips and tricks to help us manage that element of our lives a bit better. And also along that same uh, direction of sensory deficits, we have Holly Stockman, who is our um, metabolic nurse specialist with the Upper Grand Family Health Team. And Holly will be with us to share a little bit more uh, around foot care, um, and even more specifically about um, that the peripheral neuropathy. So, so stay tuned for Holly's module as well. That'll be quite insightful. She will be linking a fair bit of it to diabetes, but that is not alone um, her focus. So certainly foot care and that peripheral neuropathy will be her focus. And then even above and beyond on those main topics, we actually have Lisa Melbourne, who is our cardiac respiratory nurse uh, specialist with the Upper Grand Family Health Team. And she will be having a, a talk around blood pressure and then even more specifically around postural hypotension. Um, so that's that blood pressure drop that we often feel when we're um, changing postures. So from that lying to that sitting or that lying to standing or even sitting to standing. So she'll share her valuable bit of information on that as well. And then we have the luck to have Kate Harvey from the Osteoporosis Society, um, or Osteoporosis Canada, and she will be discussing bone health with us, um, and that will be quite valuable as well. Part of her talk will be uh, partnered with Amy Waugh, who is our dietitian, and Amy Waugh will focus on, uh, when I say our dietitian, I mean the dietitian with the Upper Grand Family Health Team. And Amy will focus in her talk with Kate Harvey on, on bone health and, and items in our diet that will, will uh, certainly meet the needs of our good bone and even muscle health as well. And then Amy Wall will also have her own module to speak to a, a good balanced diet and the nutritional pieces that we tend to maybe forget about 
that can, if we're lacking them, can actually have an impact on falls risk as well. Um, so stay tuned for that. And then we have um, a module or a day that's geared more for, for mental health. And what I mean by that is that we could probably spend several modules on mental health alone, but we've narrowed it down to, to two categories that we want to focus on um, related to falls prevention. Um, and first we have Andrea Hall, one of our mental health therapists with the Upper Grand Family Health Team. And her expertise is on grief and bereavement. So she'll be sharing her bit of knowledge on those elements uh, with us as well. So that'll be quite insightful. And then Nadia Landry, who is our social worker with the Upper Grand Family Health Team and also does some mental health therapy as well with us. Her focus will be on sleep disturbance. So, so please stay tuned for that. So at the end of the day, it, it really is, it's never just one person to help evaluate why someone has had a fall. Certainly the best medicine for, for pretty much everyone out there is that physical activity, that physical fitness. But there's a reason behind us having all these different allied health professionals sharing their level of expertise to you. Because a, a fall can happen because of perhaps something in the home environment or something that you're ingesting or not ingesting, uh, either you're through medications or through nutrition or hydration. Or it could be something that's even going on in your body systems. Maybe that blood pressure isn't where we want it to be. So I'm hoping with the panel of expertise that we have here to offer through both the VON, the family health team here at Upper Grand, as well as our community partners that we've been able to tap into, that you at home um, and here in the audience can take some of those tips and tricks and, and find ways to, to help better manage your many aspects of your health to be the best that you can be. I should also mention too that um, I know I've mentioned earlier as well that exercise has been shown to positively impact nearly every chronic illness. We also have a module dedicated to the benefits of exercise and even good balance as well. And it will be um, Rachel DeYoung from the VON who will be sharing her expertise on that. And she's partnered with Jenna Baker. And Jenna Baker is our kinesiologist, our registered kinesiologist and health promoter here at the Upper Grand Family Health Team. So I'm, I'm hoping that this will be valuable information for you to even share with your loved ones as well. And I want you to also uh, keep in mind that what is good for the heart, which is physical activity, is actually even twice as good for the brain as well. I know my expertise being the geriatric nurse specialist with the family health team, I often see clients in regards to memory concerns and brain health can often be overlooked. But the number one medicine for, for even good brain health is physical activity as well. And I like the idea of how how Kelly spoke of the SMART program as it's a way of not only even starting in the home with the one-on-one, -on -one, but leading to the group sessions as well. Because the number two thing for good brain health is being socially active. So it kind of uh, mirrors or brings together two beautiful things at the same time. So thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. Um, so Julie, what is your role within the family health team and what exactly do you do? Ooh, that is a good question, Kelly. All right, so, so my role as a geriatric nurse specialist. Okay, so the, the question was from the audience, what exactly is my role in the family health team? So as a geriatric nurse specialist, um, I am one of four nurse specialists. So we have a palliative and supportive nurse. We have the cardiac and respiratory nurse. We have our metabolic nurse and then myself, the geriatric nurse. And we have 28 family physicians that we um, support in Centre Wellington. And what often happens is that family physician, one of those 28, or in fact all of those 28, will refer their older adult clients to me if there are uh, a point in their care with their family physician where they feel a further evaluation is needed. Now often, and I would say about 90% of the time, that that is around memory changes or memory concerns. So it might be a loved one uh, approaching the family physician first or even the client themselves saying to the doc, you know what, 
my memory is just not as robust as what it used to be. I'm noticing some changes or I'm noticing some changes in my loved one. So often that physician will refer the client to me. We sit down and do a very comprehensive evaluation to see what is really going on and how can we best support them. And then in my role, I have um, the ability to, to link them to different supports as well. So I, we, we run a memory clinic, which is a team approach to evaluating someone's memory concerns. And we run those memory clinics usually about once a month. Uh, but I also have access to a geriatrician. So that geriatrician is someone who specializes in, in the older adult, but from a doctor's lens. Very much like a pediatrician is a doctor for young children, a geriatrician is a doctor for the older adult. So if we need to even step further and look at that specialty, specialty to help evaluate the older adult and what's going on there, then we'll, we'll pull that person in, that expert in. And then I also have access to a geriatric psychiatry. So if, if mood or memory changes are a little bit more complex than what the, maybe the geriatrician or even myself and the family doctor can manage, then we pull on that expertise as well. So, so a lot of what I do do does focus on the memory piece. Yeah. yeah. In saying that, um, we know that exercise is the best thing that you can do to enhance your memory. What are some other strategies that you can do? Because we know that memory deficits are actually a huge problem with falls. Yes, yes, that's a very good point. What other um, tips or tricks are out there to help manage brain health? Is that, was that the question, Kelly? Yes. So certainly there's, there's five things that we look at. Um, and we have already talked about the first two. Number one is the physical activity. So thinking of if you are physically active, you're actually nurturing your body and your brain with good oxygen flow, good blood flow. Number two is being socially active. It's that human to human contact that we tend to uh, maybe miss as our later years approach. We become a bit more isolated, perhaps because of loss of friends or family have moved far away or because of mobility limitations. So really that social piece is so important. Number three though on that list of, of some brain healthy tips is, is about being mentally stimulated. So doing things that maybe you wouldn't normally do to, to kind of get those creative juices going. So some mental stimulation ideas could be, you know, even, you know, playing a card game or getting at a different card game or, or reading a book, but not just reading the book, talking to someone about what you've read as well, reading the paper or even maybe listening to the news, but don't let it stop there. Talk to someone about what you've read or what you've watched. Um, it might be about knitting or doing a crossword puzzle, but things that stimulate the brain in hopefully different ways as well. Once you learn one new skill and, and hone in on that, well then try something different. So that variety. The number three, or the number four tip would be about um, a balanced diet. Um, so often there's lots of talk around a Mediterranean style diet and maybe we can ask Amy Waugh in her module presentation to maybe chat a little bit about the Mediterranean style diet. But that's really adding lots more vegetables and fruits to our diet, less of the red meats, not so much the lards or the fats, maybe more towards the olive oils, that type of thing. And the last thing, which I think sometimes is sometimes the most important too, is our stress level. Often if we're under a lot of stress, if it's from pain or from conflict or, or, or just too much to do in our lives, it can actually really bog us down. So it's about lessening those stressors, finding a pathway to make life more enjoyable. Um, yeah, did, did that answer your question, Kelly? It, Very much It so. did? Okay, okay, good, thank I you. Have a question. Sure. Sure. Um, uh, keeping your brain healthy with exercise, do you really believe in those brain training games or like Lumosity and Peak Training? Oh, good, good question. So the question was, uh, knowing about the brain training, do, do I believe or is there evidence out there about the luminosity or, or things online? And, and certainly I would, I would put a note of caution. If you have to start soaking a lot of money into things, it, it could get you down a garden path of, of maybe soaking more money into it. Where, so it, it all depends on what you choose. But I think it's the variety uh, as the spice of life. There's nothing wrong with that luminosity. Um, but think that there's other things out there too that, uh, that are just as beneficial as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, good. Yes. Um, I noticed the pamphlet that you had on the table there. I saw it at, at my local drugstore. Um, is that something that you're responsible for? Doreen, that's fantastic. I'm so glad you asked. Perfect. Um, no, that's really beautiful. So we've actually had this on display, and I'm not sure if, if people at home can see this. I don't know if you could zoom in on that, Adam. But this is a staying independent. Falls are the main reason older adults lose their independence. So really what this is, is um, uh, a falls risk screening tool. This has been actually um, infiltrated throughout Centre Wellington by a safe communities um, falls prevention um, action group and that's actually part of the group that I am on as well and where I think the relationship that Kelly G and, I, and myself have was really nurtured in this group as well. But you may find this, this falls risk screener or this pamphlet at your local pharmacies, at a shoe store here in Centre Wellington, maybe at your optometrist office, maybe in your doctor's office, um, chiropractor's offices. We kind of put it wherever we feel People might pick it up, even at physiotherapist's office and whatnot. And really what it is, it is, I think it's about 10 different questions. And the questions are, number one, I have fallen in the past year. And it's about circling kind of yes or no, or even mentally answering that question, yes or no, in your mind. And then there's, the questions go on as well. Number two is, I use or have been advised to use a cane or a walker to get around safely. Again, answering yes or no. Third question, sometimes I feel unsteady when I am walking. So again, think, is that a yes or a no for you? The fourth question, I steady myself by holding on to furniture when walking at home. Or another question, I am worried about falling. Or I need to push with my hands to stand up from a chair. I have trouble stepping up onto a curb. I often have to rush to a toilet. I have lost some feeling in my feet. I take medication that sometimes makes me feel lightheaded and more tired than usual. Or I take medication to help me sleep or improve my mood. And the last question on this screening tool is, I often feel sad or depressed. And beside each of those questions on the screening tool, there are helpful tips and tricks to kind of help combat what you may have circled yes to. But also at the bottom of the screening tool is a, a place where you can total up that score. And often if you answer two or three or even four or more of these questions yes, then you would be at higher risk for falling. And so I'm glad you've asked the question though. Is it, so if someone fills out this screening tool, if they see it in their community, well, what is their next step? Well, we encourage you to, to look at this screening tool, fill it out to the best of your ability. And if you do find yourself at a higher risk for falling, if you're scoring four or more on this screening tool, to bring this into your family physician and have that conversation with him or her. Um, and maybe they can better evaluate, well, what is our next step? It might be about even as simply as having that conversation with your community pharmacist about reevaluating your medications. Because it's not always just your prescription meds, it's sometimes your over the counter medications as well. Or maybe it is about linking you to me, the geriatric nurse specialist with your family health team. Or maybe linking you to our occupational therapist with the family health team, where she would come and look at home safety and look at mobility aids that might be of help in your home environment or even connecting you with Jenna, Jenna Baker, our kinesiologist, to see if there needs to be an individualized, tailor-made kind of physical routine or physical activity routine. Or maybe it's about even connecting you with the SMART program, um, or even connecting yourselves with the SMART program with the VON as well. So, that, so thank you for pointing that out, that's good. I hope you found this information valuable and informative. If you require information about the Upper Grand Family Health Team or the VON and where to get those free exercise classes happening in your community, stay tuned to the end of the session and our contact information will be displayed. Our glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we do. So that's why those exercises are important. It takes a whole community to prevent a fall. For more information about the free, smart, gentle exercise programs in your area, 
check out the Vaughn Smart website at www.vonsmartexercise.com or contact Smart Program Coordinator Kelly G by phone 519-323-2330 extension 4954 or by email at kelly.gee at von.ca.
The preceding program was brought to you by Whiteman TV and Bruce Telecom.